Welcome back to my channel, it's Joanna, and today I want to talk about 10 activities that you can do instead of giving your child screen time. Now, if you want to know why we maybe should try and avoid or reduce screen time for babies and children, let me know and I can make another video about that. The World Health Organization recommends that children zero to two years old have no screen time whatsoever and from two to four, maximum an hour a day. But they really do stress that children should be out and about and speaking and engaging with other people as much as possible. We want our children to be happy and as healthy as possible. So today I've got 10 activities that we do instead of screen time and we do these every single day, all the time, every wake window. So let's get started. First of all, we do chores. Now, I'm talking unloading the dishwasher, maybe loading it up as well. Just be careful of the knives because they're sharp, they're shiny, you put them away before baby can grab them. We're talking playing the tidy up game. How many balls can you put back into the bag? Even just learning to follow instructions. My boy is one years old and he's just starting to get the hang of instruction following. So I'll say, Harris, can you put the balls in the box? And he'll do that now because he's understanding instruction. Other chores that your baby can get involved with, unloading and loading the washing machine or the tumble dryer. They love that, especially like, I don't know, six months onwards. They love grabbing and pulling. They love watching that washing machine spin. Let me tell you, access to washing the dishes with you. So if you've got like a toddler towel or a footstool, get them over the sink, get them splashing. And even if they're just been making a bit of a mess, it's like, you know, get that water all soapy, practice rubbing the dishes. They all love getting involved. Children just want to be involved. If you're wanting to do chores and put your child in front of the TV, get them involved, they will love it. And if you can do it from an early age, it's normal, it doesn't feel like a punishment or a chore, and it can be quite fun as well, especially if you make it fun. A second activity, cooking. Now, we got Harris for his first birthday, a toddler towel, which has been an absolute godsend. Highly recommend that if you get one thing for your child, your baby, your toddler, is a toddler tower. Breakfast time, snack time, lunch time, dinner time. Best believe he is up there. He's got his own little baby knife set, like a little wooden chopping block, and he will be smushing some melon or some tofu or whatever we're cooking. You can give your child some responsibility of like giving them a banana to eat. Give them the banana on a chopping board and let them try and cut it with an age appropriate tool. <laughs> this is really good because it empowers them. It gives them the chance to feel like they're in control. They're not just left there and you give them something. They are making the thing that they want. It's also really good for language, following instruction, and obviously their motor skills like to press and chop. A third activity that we do all the time is reading books. The earlier that you can get reading books to or with your child, the better. Children that start reading books from an early age have much better literacy and therefore educational and life outcomes than children that don't read books. So get your child off the screens reading books. We have a little library corner downstairs where Harris plays, so he has open access to getting any of the books that we want. We don't have loads and loads of books, but we have enough that he can choose whichever ones that he wants and he can pull them out himself. Number four, nursery rhymes. We actually have a book of nursery rhymes and it is Harris's favorite book. He absolutely loves it. It's something that like, when I think of nursery rhymes personally, doesn't really float my boat, but he loves it. And once you get into it and you start to know all those nursery rhymes, you'll be singing Hickory Dickory Dock, the mouse run up that clock. Very fun, very exciting. The Muffin Man, yes, we know the Muffin Man. And there are loads of hand actions that you can do. You know, the Incy, the Incy Wincy Spider, and kids love that. When your baby reaches an age where they can start clapping their hands, they can start doing the gestures, they can start dancing, they will be dancing to nursery rhymes. Another activity is number five, shape sorting. Now, you can have a pretty classical shape sorting toy. These are really, really good for their motor skills to be able to use logical reasoning and deduction to figure out like shapes and which ones go in which holes, fine motor skills to be able to contort it to get it in the hole or you can just make a shape sorting toy. This can literally just be a bit of cardboard that you cut a hole in and you just put the toys through. You can make it really accessible to your child's age. So you can make it with a really big hole. You can put big items in, balls. But when they get older, you can put small items like little pipe cleaners through a really tight, small hole. It can be shapes, it can be colours, it can be sizes. There are loads of things that you can be sorting out and manipulating to put in different places. Really good for language, colour recognition, shape recognition. That's maths, that's language, that's literacy. There's so much going on that you probably don't even realise that shape sorting is actually really good for. Number six, 
independent play. This is something that you do need to encourage. My child, who's one years old, he has gone through periods of wanting to play independently. At the moment, not so much a fan of independent play because he can now walk. He wants to come with us wherever we go because he knows that he can walk. So you want to encourage independent play, even if it's just a few minutes at a time. A good place to do independent play, which can actually potentially help with their sleep as well, is in their bedroom, in their cot. So if your child, say, doesn't really like their cot, you can put them in their cot, get some of their favourite toys, and have a few minutes while you sit and like put their clothes away or put your clothes away, tidy up and leave them in their cot in a safe place and they can get used to their cot and do some independent play. Independent play is something that they'll, they'll definitely get better at the older that they get. And when they start to have the developmental ability to role play and have imagination and all these sorts of things, independent play will really take off. If you've got a really young baby, you can just simply get like a play mat or play gym or just put some toys out on the floor and you can just encourage them to reach for toys which can encourage rolling and um, even just like a newborn laying them down on the little mat and just encourage them to look up and move around. That will really help their neck muscles and their back muscles. Number seven, go outside. Children need loads of exercise and loads of stimulation. And I don't mean stimulation from screens because screens just do not cut it. Screens are visual and audio and children need more than that. They need to run around, they need to fall over, they need to get covered in mud, they need to eat the mud, they need to smell it. They need to go outside and have a sensory overload so that their brain can process everything. Even something like their eyesight. I mean, I say, I say this as someone that wears spectacles, um, but being inside, looking at screens is bad for eyes. <laughs> Screen, it's a set distance away from you. Your eyes don't really have to work hard. But when you go outside, you have to practice your long and your short sighted, much better for the development of their eyes and their brains. Engage with them, talk about what you can see. Even if they're just newborn and they can't really see much, talk about the world around them. The sky is blue, there are clouds today. Oh, it's a rainy day today. There's so much that you can describe through language that will help ch a child of any age. As I said, the library. Now, I personally look at the library and reading as two separate activities because reading, you do at home, right? But the library is a separate, is a separate activity because you go there. Now, a library is an outing, it's free. All you need to do is get there, walk, take a bus, drive, whatever. But once you're there, it's free. There are often baby groups there as well. Often in the children's section, the librarians may leave things out like worksheets or colouring sheets, and there are often maybe some toys. So the library is this whole little like wake window out. Go to your local library. Nine, baby groups. Now, baby groups, there are loads that are paid for. There are loads that are free. It depends on how old your child is. You can go from when they're young to like a baby massage or sensory play. When they're older, just be going to like baby and toddler groups. There are loads that are free. Community centres or churches will be doing something for children. It's like an hour and a half. You just go, let them run around. You can normally have a cup of tea and a biscuit. You just chill, watch your child run around. When they fall over or they start snatching, you go over and you intervene and you say, we don't snatch, we share. Let's do our gentle hands. These kind of things, right? I'm not the most educated in how to deal with toddlerhood conflict. Um, my child is just one years old. And for me, I'm like, as an ex-teacher, I'm triggered. And the last one, number 10, arts and crafts. Now, again, there are loads of age appropriate arts and crafts things that you can do with really young children it can be like bubbles or it can be some food play i don't know it can be like colored yogurt or something that we did because i didn't want to use paint because i was worried about it being toxic or having a reaction because i have a, had an allergic reaction to paint before and um, so i just put food coloring in yogurt and just let him mix it about but when they're older you can start scribbling harris has started to scribble with crayons he does like to eat them as well but that's a whole nother topic using washing up liquid and putting a hand mixer on and just making loads of bubbles that is good fun seasonal activities at most baby groups they'll do things that are themed or seasonal like at the moment it's november so making poppies you can also do things like play-doh as well so there are loads of different things that you can be getting on with just maybe have a look on instagram or pinterest so those have been 10 activities that you can do with your child to try and reduce or minimize screen time as I said, some of these activities are not independent, but things like independent play and reading, they definitely can be. Children need to be bored. They have to be sat there twiddling their thumbs to be able to think, I'm going to go and do this and take initiative and realise that they are the masters of their own ship. 
You don't need to stimulate your child all the time. And yes, if you get your child involved and helping you as early as you can, it's not going to be this big chore. You're not dragging them away of screen time and using this as like a punishment or something that they don't want to do because they're interested in what you want to do. Children are so interested in people. They want to learn, they want to model, they want to watch you. So if you can just get them involved, they will love it and you'll be building an amazing bond and really good skills. If you like those tips, please do let me know below. Give it a love you. Like, comment and subscribe. Like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you for the next one. Bye bye.